What's going on guys? So one of my viewers actually linked me a German website that has all the nutrient data that I wanted to test for and there are still a few things that we have questions about but I'm just going to go over her comment, this website real quick, show you guys the nutrient data and just explain what things we still might have to do but I, I think this is really it. So so she links this website, she showed uh, tall happy colors, thank you so much for, for doing this. Uh, she showed all these nutrients and uh, the raw version, the cooked version, and a bunch of different things. And the thing she didn't link to me, I was able to find myself just using a German to English translator. Uh, did you guys know that cheese is keys in German or something like that? <laughs> okay, so uh, let's just go over these real quick. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what I assumed about it what this data says and what we can maybe we need to still do further research on so this is the nutrient uh, this is the sheep brain and based on a hundred grams of sheep brain which is approximately a quarter pound for you Americans uh, there's no vitamin A and this is one of the things I was concerned about because all high quality animal tissue is supposed to have at least some vitamin A hey guys I could be wrong on the brain the brain might not have any vitamin A at all but seeing as vitamin A is what heals tissue I really think there should be some sort of vitamin A content in the lamb in the lamb brain but anyway um, has a lot of vitamin C 15% uh, of your DV 15,000 micrograms one microgram is 0 0.001 milligram uh, so that that's the unit we have here so 15,200 uh, micrograms of vitamin C we have 1,200 micrograms of vitamin E and there's no vitamin K in here and I this is another vitamin I'm maybe they needed to test for vitamin K2 in, in the case of this but that was just another thing I was unsure of but um, and then the, we just scroll that I mean there's a bunch of minerals in here I've never really talked too much about the mineral profile of brain but uh, it does have a decent amount of potassium sodium phosphorus calcium and magnesium there's a, a small amount and one thing worth mentioning is there is a, a small amount of iodide as well uh, iron, zinc, copper, very plentiful amounts. I actually had some problems with copper overdose with myself in regards to eating too much brain and liver, but that's save that for another video. Uh, and then, of course, a lot of DHA. So I knew that foods like brain and salmon oil had a lot of vitamin C, a lot of vitamin E, and a lot of DHA omega-3s, uh, some things that a lot of people don't don't really get on carnivore, or, or like especially in the case of vitamin C and vitamin E, things that people don't think are on the carnivore diet. And this data proves that. The, I mean, there, of course, there are other vitamins that I thought were in here that this data doesn't show that we still might want to test for. But for the most part, it doesn't matter because the other foods I'm going to show you have those vitamins. Uh, so the next thing is liver. And liver is nutritionally complete with the exception of DHA. You know, the DHA content isn't super high. So for 100 grams of liver, we have 21,000 micrograms of vitamin A, well over DV. We have... And I'm skipping vitamin B because we know all the B vitamins are in these foods. Uh, we have a, a lot of vitamin C, 22,000 micrograms of vitamin C. Uh, there's no vitamin D registered in here, but liver does have small amounts of vitamin D. Uh, vitamin E, liver has 240 micrograms, so a small amount of vitamin E. And they, when they tested this liver for vitamin K, it came up. But I don't know, they're not testing for vitamin K2 to my understanding, so I, I'm not really sure on that. But in this case, it does say liver has vitamin K. Uh, in regards to minerals, some potassium, phosphorus, chloride, uh, iron, a lot of iron, a lot of zinc. Liver is very high in copper, which is the biggest problem out of anything. Copper overdose can be an issue with people if they don't eat enough muscle meat for zinc. Uh, and there's a small amount of iodine in this as well. For people wondering if you don't eat fish on this diet, where you get it from. Uh, this is amino acid profile, fatty acid profile, and again, we're mainly looking at DHA, and there is a small amount of DHA in liver, 84 milligrams. Uh, the other fatty acids, oleic acid, um, you could, you guys could look at all these acids, linoleic acid if you want, uh, but that's not the focus of this video. My focus is fat-soluble vitamins, omega-3s, water-soluble vitamins. And then when we look at the cooked liver, this was, so the cooked versus raw question is pretty much answered, and I really always had an answer to this question. I figured that the vitamin content really only matters in the raw food initially and maybe the vitamin C and the vitamin E content would lower a bit but the vitamin A, the vitamin D, the vitamin K content does not change. The DHA content does not change. There is no significant nutrient 
difference in cooking your food unless you're heating it for hours and hours and hours at a very high temperature. Uh, I think, the, as I said earlier, the initial thing that matters is how much vitamins and minerals were in the food before you cooked it. Um, so fresh meat, and this shows that there's a small amount of vitamin A in meat. There's, and that's the fat that's in the meat, I'm assuming. It doesn't, they didn't test for vitamin C here. They didn't test for vitamin D. It didn't register any. But they did test for vitamin E, and there's no vitamin K in here. So there's definitely vitamin C, vitamin K, and possibly vitamin D in small amounts in the fat of muscle meat. So I don't know. The, the, the data here isn't, this is why. Like we're seeing, like, yeah, we can get vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin K in other foods that we'll see here, but it should be at least a small amount in this food as well. And when we go down to look at the DHA content of this food, docosahexaonic acid, it's not, it's not present. So, but we know it has some. That's where it gets tricky with these, uh, these results. So now we're looking at beef tongue, vitamin A, small amount, vitamin C. They did test the beef tongue for vitamin C, and it did have a small amount. Uh, they didn't test for vitamin D here. There is a small amount of vitamin E and no vitamin K, but I believe they did test this for, no, they didn't test this one for DHA either. So again, there are a bunch of variables here that I'm not sure of, but for the most part, we do have some pretty convincing data on nutrients that people weren't too confident were in animal foods. So here we're looking at salmon roe, and salmon roe, I believe, has every vitamin in it. It's nutritionally complete. You don't need anything else. So salmon roe has a good amount of vitamin A. Salmon roe has a lot of vitamin C. It has small amounts of vitamin D, a well, pretty good amount actually of vitamin D. It has plenty of vitamin E. They did not test for vitamin K2, and I would bet up and down all day that salmon roe has vitamin K2 in it. Uh, the mineral profile looks good, plenty of potassium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, a lot of phosphorus actually. Uh, of course, a lot of more iodine than in the ruminant flesh. There's a lot of iron, a lot of zinc. Small amount of copper, so this is good, very food, for, very good for zinc. And then we go to DHA, super high in DHA, way higher in DHA than any of the other foods we've looked at. 1,800 milligrams of DHA. This is like multiple times higher than not uh, than brain tissue. So by far, salmon roe, most nutrient dense food by a DHA standpoint and overall nutrient profile. And this is salted salmon roe, um, pretty much the same nutritional profile, uh, just more salt in it. We won't look at that too much. Uh, chicken eggs. This is interesting because these eggs have every fat soluble vitamin pretty much. They have vitamin A. These eggs have uh, vitamin D. They have vitamin E. And they have vitamin K. What these eggs don't have is vitamin C, which we can get in muscle meat. And they have a decent amount of minerals, all trace elements for the most part. Pretty good source of iodine in eggs. And DHA, they did test for. There's a pretty good amount of DHA in eggs. So eggs are, eggs are up like salmon roe, eggs, liver. They're just so nutrient dense, like such balanced nutritional profiles too. They're excellent for you. And the reason we have a couple cheeses here is to look at the vitamin K2 content. So cheese, this is Gouda cheese. Cheese has vitamin A. It, it does not have vitamin C. No vitamin D. This has vitamin E. This cheese does not have vitamin K. So this isn't a good example, but. Um, cheese is very high in calcium. One thing to note. Uh, did they test for DHA in this? No. The Emmentaler cheese has vitamin A, has no vitamin C, but the Emmentaler cheese has vitamin D, has same amount of vitamin, similar amount of vitamin E, but they tested the Emmentaler for vitamin K, and it has a decent amount of vitamin K, uh, as well as iodine. Cheese has plenty of iodine, but they didn't test these cheeses for DHA, which they definitely have. Uh, next cheese is Parmesan, and we're mainly looking at the vitamin K2 content. Yes, there is vitamin K2 and there is vitamin D in cheese. So the fermentation process and the quality of the milk definitely has an effect on this, uh, as we can see in the variants. You guys can do, I'm, not, I'm just trying to get through this quickly so this video isn't too long. Uh, the Camembert, we look at the vitamin uh, K2 content. It's there, substantial. And then we look at the... This is bone marrow, actually. I, I wanted to look up bone marrow, but they didn't have, they didn't do the vitamin testing on bone marrow. And because bone marrow definitely has vitamin A and it definitely has vitamin K in it and C and E, so, and likely vitamin D as well. So I can safely say that this nutrient testing is very valuable because we know that if we need vitamin A, we can get these foods, blah, blah, blah. All those vitamins, we have a food we could eat. But the problem is 
There are some foods that should have vitamin A that don't. There are some foods that should have vitamin D that don't. C, E. But we're good for now. We don't have to really test if brain has vitamin A because we know we could eat liver for it. We don't have to test if, uh, um, you know, and we know that, like, for vitamin K2, we know the fermented cheeses have higher amounts of vitamin K2. So, and we can, and we see that pastured eggs here have vitamin K2. So we could assume pastured animal fats have vitamin K2, and we can assume that the fermentation process increases the amount of vitamin K2 in the food. So because of that, every and every question is answered. Every question. We know some foods have plenty of vitamin A as retinol. We know a lot of foods have vitamin C. We know some foods have vitamin D. We know that there's plenty of vitamin E in brain tissue and, and all these animal foods, these high quality fatty animal foods. And we know that there's also vitamin K. So complete nutritional profile, also all the trace elements, all the minerals, you can get them in ample amounts in all of these. And DHA, although you know there are a few pieces missing here and there, we answered all of our questions. There's all the fat soluble vitamins and vitamins you need and minerals and elements you need are in animal foods. The cooked versus raw debate, there might be some enzyme or bacterial benefit from eating raw food, but we don't know. There is definitely a benefit to eating fermented foods for your vitamin K2 content. But that being said, you could also get vitamin K2 from eggs, from liver, as well as some more approachable fermented foods like cheeses. So thank you guys for watching. Please, I will put, I will put this website in the comments. You guys can do, do whatever. Please share this. I think this out of all the videos I've done, this is probably the most important one. I know I could have made this shorter and just said, hey guys, look at this website. This says everything. But I think it was helpful that I went through all the foods and, and explained everything. So the one thing that hasn't been answered is grain-fed versus grass-fed. And we know in regards to muscle meat that and, and that has small amounts of fat on it, grass-fed has higher omega-3s, higher vitamin content, but it's not fatty enough for a lot of people. And the answer, the real answer to that question is, if you're incorporating grass-fed, pastured, high-quality organs, liver, eggs, brain, fish into your diet, wild-caught fish, fatty fish into your diet, that is where you will get your significant vitamin content. If all you're eating is steaks and ground beef and blah, 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 then maybe switching over to grass-fed will make a decent difference in your vitamin intake, but in the context of someone who's eating those super nutrient-dense organ foods, it doesn't really matter whether they have a little bit of grass-fed meat or a little bit of grain-fed meat on the side. That's not that big of a deal. What we need to test is the nutrient difference between grain-fed fat and grass-fed fat, as well as like grain-fed liver and grass-fed liver. We need to test those those foods for nutrient differences, fat, uh, fatty acid profiles, uh, minerals, uh, any toxins or anything in those foods. That's what we have to find out. And that the next important thing is to show that there's might be some negative things in certain grain fed products and uh, especially in this whole context like me saying you need to eat uh, pastured grass fed organ meats fat eggs those things are generally what I mean like it's not like go to the store and buy conventional eggs and commercial beef liver and all of those foods might have a substantial amount of vitamins in them they probably taste bad. They're missing other vitamins, and and that I have a bunch of other videos you can watch if you guys want to hear more about that topic, grain fed versus grass fed. A few of my past few videos on food quality as well.